Father, Lord, we are delighted to be at your feet again to learn. Breathe upon your word. Glorify your name in Jesus' name. Amen. We welcome you wherever you are from all over the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. God bless you. Like we said last week, and as we all know, all is not well with the security situation in Nigeria. Accordingly, the topic we looked at last week was the growing insecurity in Nigeria, each one tell one. Today, we shall be looking at the growing insecurity in Nigeria, part two, play your part. Nigeria belongs to all of us, with over 250 ethnic groups, 36 states, and the Federal Capital Territory, over 180 million residents, and over 50 million Nigerians in the diaspora. Whether male, female, young or old, every one of us is indeed relevant, and you and I have a role to play in the security situation of Nigeria. Today, we shall be looking at the different roles that each one of us can play towards the well-being of our great country. Let us begin with the president and the federal government, as well as governors of the 36 states. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, New Living Version says, Everyone must submit to governing authorities, for all authority comes from God, and those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. So, anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and they will be punished. Verse 4 makes it even clearer. He says, the authorities are God's servants, sent for our good. But if you are doing wrong, of course, you should be afraid, for they have the power to punish you. They are God's servants, sent for the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. Therefore, we can see very clearly from the word of God that our leaders at the federal, the state, and local government levels were put there by God himself. They are God's servants, and they are meant to exercise rule over us in the fear and glory of God. When a person becomes president or governor, he is expected by God to administer his office conscientiously and fairly towards all that he rules over, both those who voted for him and those who did not vote for him. God commands all of us as citizens to respect our leaders and to obey them. God also authorizes our leaders to punish all wrongdoers. Therefore, God shall hold responsible all our leaders at the federal, the state, and local government levels for how they are exercising the powers that he has entrusted into their hands. If a leader at the federal, the state, or local government level, therefore, connives with or refuses to punish criminals or evildoers, and he allows them to continue to wreak havoc on the citizens of our nation, that leader shall be answerable to the Almighty God that put him in the office in the first place. God hates injustice. God hates oppression and corruption by leaders. We therefore call on our leaders at all levels to exercise the powers that God himself, we the people, and also our constitution have given them to bring to justice all the people that are perpetrating violence and other crimes 
against persons, against properties, and against communities, and causing so much insecurity in our land. There should be no sacred cows. There should be no favoritism in the dispensation of justice, as there can be no peace except there is justice. And this is the role of the government. Now, what about the role of believers in our quest to end insecurity? There are two major roles for us as believers in this situation. First of all, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, it says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. So, if we want an end to insecurity, we are to be praying for our president, for the federal government, for their advisors, for the state governors and their advisors, and for all those who are in authority at the state's local government, and even our towns, our villages, and our communities. The Bible says that this is a critical way to have peace in our nation. So, this is a call on all those who believe in God and who love our nation to be praying constantly for our leaders. We should not take these intercessory prayers for granted. Let's remember that we are not the only ones that have interest in this nation. That is why the Lord Jesus taught that the farmer is not the only one that sows on his farm. That's why Jesus said that when a farmer sows and that farmer carelessly goes to sleep, the enemy too will come and he will sow tears even on his land thereby bringing chaos and confusion onto the farm. We must therefore continue to pray for our leaders that they will be hearing from God because the devil too talks to leaders. And if their followers are not praying for them, such leaders may be obeying the dictates of the devil. The second role for us as believers is closely related to the first one that we just examined. The first one that is intercession is just for leaders all the time, whether there are problems or no problems in the nation. While the second one is the role that believers are expected to play when there are problems in the land. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14, tells us that if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and heal their land. This is a sacred responsibility that all children of God have to call upon God in moments of national challenges like the ongoing coronavirus pandemic and the rising cases of insecurity. We are to call upon Almighty God, our Savior, our Helper, our Deliverer. So, once again, we appeal to all children of God to continue calling upon God every day concerning the evil in our land, because God can deliver our land from this evil. The earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof, the world and all its people. The God is called the Father of mercies, and he is gracious and is full of compassion. An example can be found in Exodus, chapter 3, verses 7 to 8, 
where it says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians. So God is able to hear our cries when we call unto him and is able to turn around our captivity. Now, what about elders? Our elders are able to play very critical roles in moments of national crisis. Let us read Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 14 and 15. There was a little city and few men within it. And there came a great king against it, and he besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. Now there was found in it a poor wise old man, and he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. We can see that in this case, God used an old man to deliver his nation in the scripture. We can always learn from the wisdom of our elders in the land, whether as individuals, as communities, or even as a nation. That is why Job chapter 12 verse 12 tells us that with the ancient is wisdom, and in length of days is understanding. We are hereby calling on our elders in this nation to arise and to speak forth with their God-given wisdom. Let our elders not fold their hands in silence, but let them speak forth. Let them prefer wise solutions to the challenges facing our nation. What about our ladies, our mothers, our sisters? Throughout history, many ladies have stood out in moments of national crisis and provided solutions for their nations and their communities. Bible scholars will readily recall that Deborah, a lady it was, that led our nation to victory in a war that's recorded in the book of Judges chapters 4 and 5. I'm sure we remember a whole book was dedicated in the Bible to the exploits of Esther as a fearless leader and queen that was used by God to save her people. Our ladies are welcome to play their own roles in arriving at solutions to the great insecurity in our nation. What about our youths? Statistics show that Nigeria is a youthful nation. As the majority of Nigerians, 80% of Nigerians precisely, are less than 40 years old. We can see from Genesis chapter 41, verse 46, that Joseph was just 30 years old when he became the prime minister in Egypt, and he was the one that brought ideas that delivered Egypt from national crisis, existential crisis. David was just 22 years old when he killed Goliath, and he saved his nation from great embarrassment and shame. The current French president was 39 years old when he was elected to lead his nation. Even now, he's just 43 years old. J.F. Kennedy was 43 years, Bill Clinton 46, and Obama was 47 when the three of them became presidents of the United States of America. Our youths are welcome to bring forth bright and godly ideas that will see our nation through in the ongoing crisis. History teaches us that everyone can indeed become relevant in times of national crisis. 
Some persons that were previously regarded as outcasts, some even called bastards or of marginalized ethnic minorities, have delivered their nations when it mattered most. An example that readily comes to mind is the story of Jephthah in Judges chapter 11. He was initially seen as an outcast because of the circumstances of his birth, and he could not even live among his people, and he had to relocate abroad. But when Israel was facing an existential threat, they sent for him and begged him to lead them to war, which he did successfully, and he became their national leader. This is a call to all Nigerians, both at home and in the diaspora, that are from ethnic minorities, that this great nation belongs to all of us, and all hands must be on deck, whether we are from the major tribes, or we are from the minor tribes, or we are from even tribes that are little known on the map of our great nation. Everyone is welcome to contribute his own ideas to finding lasting solutions. As we know, the 36 state governors are the chief security officers of their states. Naturally, they therefore have both constitutional and practical leadership roles to play. We call on all our 36 state governors to come out and not remain silent. They have been elected to lead and to provide security to all the residents in their states, and their views and their contributions count a lot. We are delighted that some of the governors have already started speaking out openly on the way they think can bring solutions. Let us see briefly what the Taraba state government governor said recently. Since I came to power, I have repeatedly, and I'm going to repeat it again today, that unless we break down the strata of security agencies, particularly the police, there must, I insist, there must be a state police, and there must also be a local government police. The federal government alone cannot handle the security. It has shown that they have failed and failed and failed. The security has to be broken down. Where we copied this constitution is America. United States of America has federal police, state police, and the local government police. Where something is bigger than the local government police, the state police comes in. Where it is bigger than the state police, the federal police comes in. Where it is bigger than the whole three of them, then the military is invited. The military is the last resource. But us here is the military that is the first resource. Because we have woefully failed. And I'm calling on the APC government to take this seriously and find a solution to it. And I'm calling on all politicians, both APC, PDP, and all of us that are in position of power to seriously look at the security edges. In this state, I've lost so many people I can't count. This is a chairman. I lost my own member, House of Assembly, Hosea Ibi, and too many others to mention. And as I speak to you, there is tension in the southwest. Do we continue to sleep and keep quiet as if nothing is happening? Something is happening which is desperately needed an answer. I'm calling on the federal government, all the people that matter at the authority, those who should check our constitution, are the senators and members of House of uh, Representatives. They should look into the constitution with the view of amending it immediately. That is what I will say on this issue of security. We need to tackle it in finality. The other governors, too, are welcome to contribute to finding workable and acceptable peaceful solution to this national crisis. We are in a democracy. Every segment of the nation 
is free and indeed encouraged to contribute to our national development. It is not only elected leaders that should contribute. Our professionals are also welcome, both males and females. Let us hear briefly from a female journalist what she has to say. Hi, my name is Solu Lokwe Adela Ribalogun. I'm a journalist in Nigeria. Um, I'm a Christian. I don't know if I say I'm practicing, but I, am, I do identify as a Christian. I think that a lot of the issues surrounding the insecurity in Nigeria are due to a lack of political will, um, a lack of sincerity as well. We have an understaffed, under, underpaid police structure, police system. We have military that is having some form of operation, some form of security maneuver in several states across the country, which it really shouldn't be. The military is meant to protect you from external aggression from outside and protect your borders or the police is responsible for internal security but in nigeria we see that it's different the police most of the time cannot handle the internal security but that's not by it's not by accident um i'm not a conspiracy theorist but i do believe that there have been intentional decisions made that have made it very difficult if not damn near impossible for the police to do the job they should do the way they should be doing. We know millions of naira, millions of dollars, millions of pounds have been stolen, and it has hampered the way we address security. But one of the things that I find very bedeviling is the fact that governments and individuals are willing to sit down with terrorists. They're willing to sit down with militants, with people who kill, who rape, who maim, who have taken up arms against the state, who have made it difficult for people to continue their livelihoods or to live in their homes. And these are the people we want to negotiate with. What does Nigeria know about justice? What do Nigerians know about justice if we are willing to negotiate with terrorists without making sure that their victims are compensated, that their victims see justice done? Are we being sincere with ourselves? So the security situation can be handled. It's not impossible, but we need sincerity and we need concerted political will. And we need people to know that as long as we as Nigerians continue to see that it's those who take up arms and who are violent that the state respects, we won't respect the state. We cannot forget the role that can be played by men of God in moments of national challenges. We recall in 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 19 to 22, how prophet Elisha delivered the nation from poisonous water and barren land. We also saw how God used the same prophet Elisha to bring a peaceful end to the constant raid on the land by bandits from Syria, as recorded in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 7 to verse 23. We still have men and women who genuinely hear from God in Nigeria today, and we appeal to them to play their God-given role to achieve peace, justice, and progress in our land. Our religious leaders are encouraged to keep on speaking out in churches, in mosques, and in all other religious platforms. Our roles as men and women of God is not just to teach people about going to heaven, but it also includes promoting godliness, peace, justice, and knowledge in the land. We appeal to all our religious leaders and communal leaders to continue to teach their followers the ways of peace, the ways of justice, godliness, and mutual respect to people of other faiths and people of other views. It cannot be overemphasized that we need a free and vibrant press. At this time, we can see some of the, high, uh, the front pages of these newspapers, some of the views they have expressed so boldly. While we may not agree with some of the views that some newspapers or some commentators are expressing, but for democracy to thrive, 
all voices must be heard and the press must be given freedom to operate and to provide a vibrant platform for the citizens to bring forth their views and their opinions. The quality of leadership at the national, state, and local governments can be greatly enhanced by a free and vibrant press. A free press also promotes transparency and accountability in leadership, which are critical factors for us to achieve lasting peace, justice, progress, and prosperity in our land. The social media, social clubs, etc., they also need to keep the matter of insecurity on their front burner. Finally, our elected officials in the states and national legislature should continue to debate this matter. They should hold public hearings. They should continue and continue until we are able to find a peaceful and lasting solution to the problem of insecurity in Nigeria. For as we have seen in Psalm 102, verse 22b, God is able to teach his senators wisdom. Let us pray for our senators, for our leaders. Father Lord, we lift up all the levels of leadership in this country, at the local government, the state, and the federal, both legislature, our judges, and the executives, from the president, the vice, the ministers, commissioners, and even our traditional rulers. Father, you are the one that puts leaders in place. We pray that you continue to guide our leaders, that you continue to instruct them, you continue to teach them. As we are seeking for solutions to this cancer that is gradually eating away at the soul of our nation, Father, come and deliver our land. Father, come and embolden more and more of our youths, our ladies, our political and non-political leaders, our professionals, our religious leaders, to stand up and be counted and to speak boldly, to speak honestly, and to join with our leaders at all levels to find lasting solution to the problems in our land. Father, we thank you, Lord, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. See you again same time next week.